Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessie with Southern Pride Sushi Gal and this is the start of my Countdown to Thanksgiving series. Today I'm showing you four easy appetizers to make for Thanksgiving, so let's get started. So first we're going to make some green bean casserole stuffed mushrooms. I have a package of baby portobello mushrooms. I have salt, a can of green beans, cream of mushroom soup, french fried onions, and black pepper. All right, so to begin, we're gonna get those mushrooms washed off real nice. And next, we're gonna drain that can of green beans and cut them up very small onto the cutting board. That's why they can fit into the stuffed mushrooms. So as you can see, I got them pretty fine. You don't have to mince them if you don't want to. They can still be pretty chunky. So I've added them to a bowl, and now I'm going to add a can of cream of mushroom soup. Get that all in there. And then next, I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then we're gonna put in a half a, oh, sorry. <laughs> next, we're gonna mix it up. Also, this makes enough filling for two packages of mushrooms. I just only use one. Now, next, we're gonna put in a half a cup of French fried onions. Jump the gun. And then we're gonna get it all stirred up. That's how it should look. All right, so next, I'm gonna take all the stems out of the mushrooms so that we can get them filled with the mixture. And you can reserve the stems for something else or toss them, um, whatever you would like to do. I just tossed mine. So we've got all the stems out. And next, I'm going to take that mixture and put it into the mushrooms. We'll get all those filled up. Which I'm not a very good mushroom filler, but that's okay. Doesn't change the taste. All right, so we've got them good and filled. And now I'm going to take a fourth of a cup of those French fried onions. Oops. They just would not come out. Uh, I just kept thinking, oh, see, yep, spill them on the counter. That's what I do. All right, so I'm gonna put these in a Ziploc bag and I'm going to get them all crunched up. It probably would have been easier to put the bag on the counter and bang it with my fist, but it would shake the camera if I did that. Um, and you can also put it in like a food processor or a blender or anything like that and get it really fine if you'd want to. It's really just whatever your preference. We just want crushed French fried onions. That's how mine are. So then I topped, I liked them a little chunkier. I didn't want them very fine. So then we topped all the mushrooms with the mixture. just like you would top a regular green bean casserole. And then we slid those into the oven at 400 for 12 to 15 minutes. So next we're gonna be making mac and cheese cups. We've got some butter, some real bacon pieces, some panko breadcrumbs, some shaker Parmesan cheese, and boxed mac and cheese. So I cooked the mac and cheese according to the directions on the box. So you can actually use homemade mac and cheese for this, and I will link a recipe below that shows that, but I was just trying to do the easiest thing possible and that was just boxed mac and cheese so we're gonna get that cheese sauce mixed into it and then once the cheese sauce is mixed in good and melted I'm gonna take that entire container of the real bacon pieces and I'm gonna dump that in there too you could also just make some bacon and crumble it in there but like I said I'm trying to be easy peasy lemon squeezy over here so we're gonna get that all mixed up and next I'm going to put those in some muffin tins that have the liners in them. Now, here's where, if I was doing these again, I would either spray the inside of my muffin tins with olive oil spray or whatever kind of spray you like to use, or I would have not used the liners and just sprayed the muffin tins and put the mac and cheese in there. Because when I pulled these off, it actually pulled my muffins apart. They still tasted great, but they weren't very aesthetically pleasing. So next we're gonna make the topping. I'm gonna take a half, sorry, I'm gonna take two tablespoons of melted butter and then two tablespoons of the panko breadcrumbs. And next we're gonna do two tablespoons of the shaker Parmesan cheese. Get that put in there. You could probably use regular breadcrumbs, but I think panko breadcrumbs just are the better of the breadcrumbs. So next we're gonna get all this mixed up. It should make a paste-like consistency. 
just like it's going to look right here so don't be afraid if it's kind of lumpy and goopy that's how it's supposed to be it's not supposed to be very liquidy so next I'm going to top each of the muffins with this delicious mixture and it is really good I tasted the spoon after I topped the muffins with it because you know I have no self-control apparently and it was so good it would be really good on top of just a regular baked mac and cheese at the the shaker parmesan romano cheese that i use really gave it a good kick i will say because it had the romano in it it had that smell so if you don't like romano just use the regular parmesan that's just what i had on hand so i used it so for these i popped these in the oven at 425 for about 15 20 minutes so they were golden brown on top so next i'm going to be making mini phyllo shells filled with cream cheese and red pepper jelly so good so the first things we're gonna do is cut up the block of cream cheese so here's my cutting board moving yet again i need to put a dish towel underneath it so uh, you need to cut these into pretty small squares i think when i first started out i cut them too big and then I tried them in the cups and then I had to cut them smaller um, this is actually more cream cheese in the phyllo cups I recommend if you're using a whole block of cream cheese to use two packages of the phyllo cups but anyways I got all these cut up into small enough squares and then I took them and I put them in the phyllo cups I filled them all up with the cream cheese that was sticking to my fingers and of course I touched everything and got cream cheese everywhere but that's okay <laughs> That's okay. So we put all the little squares of cream cheese in the phyllo cups. Obviously they don't have to be perfect. So once the cream cheese is all in there, we're gonna take the red pepper jelly and just put a good dollop in there. I actually wish that the phyllo cups were bigger because I wanted more red pepper jelly if you have never had red pepper jelly before you should try it. I don't know if that's more of like a Southern thing. Normally when you go to holiday deals, uh, someone serves a block of room temperature cream cheese with it on top and then you put it on Ritz crackers. And it is so, so good. But I felt like this was easier because it's just something I can make and pop into your mouth when you're eating it. So I cooked this at 350 for about 15 minutes until it's golden brown. So next we're gonna make the crab dip. We got mild cheddar shredded, cream cheese, a lemon, Old Bay seasoning, two cans of crab lump meat, black pepper, garlic, Worcestershire sauce, salt, paprika, uh, mayo, and sour cream. So first you're going to take the block of cream cheese, needs to be at room temperature, and then we're gonna do a fourth of a cup of sour cream. And then next we're going to do a fourth of a cup of mayo. As you can see, mine's not full of mayo. It kind of freaks me out to put mayo in a dip, but it makes it really, really good. So make sure to use it. All right, so then next we're gonna put in a cup of the shredded cheddar and then a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we're going to do, let's see, we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of paprika. And we're gonna do half a teaspoon of salt. I use the pink Himalayan salt. You can use whatever kind of salt you would like. It's just salt. And then next we're going to do a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper and lastly this is not in the recipe that I'm going to link below but we are also going to add two teaspoons of the Old Bay seasoning I think that this makes the recipe so I would not omit this I would definitely add this it's so yummy so but it's your choice but I think you should all right so then we're gonna do a tablespoon of the Worcestershire sauce and then a tablespoon of the lemon juice. I use fresh lemon juice. You can always use the kind in the bottle. I just think that the fresh tastes a lot better. And then lastly, we are going to dump in both of those cans of the lump crab meat. You can use fresh crab meat if you want to. Um, I guess you could use imitation crab too. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I think that it would taste a lot better with either the canned crab meat 
or fresh crab meat. Or you could also put in, I've heard of people putting in, like adding in shrimp and all different kinds of seafood in here, but it's up to you. So next we're gonna get it good and stirred and this is where it's important that your cream cheese be at room temperature because otherwise this would not stir up that well. So we're gonna get it good mixed up. Next we're spray down the casserole dish. And spread that dip into there. See, that's how it looks. Oh, it's so, so good. Just looking at it, it's making me want to make it again. My family devoured it. It was so, so good. So we're going to dump that in there. Get it all in there. Can't leave any little pieces out. All right, and then we're going to pat it all down, get it nice and even. There we go. And then next, this is also not in the recipe linked below, but I topped it with some shredded cheddar because I love cheese. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. I thought it was really good that way. And then I baked this at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes or until it was nice and bubbly and golden brown. So this was the final setup. Got the cups, got our mushrooms, and then I served the crab dip with a, a sliced up baguette and some um, pita crackers and they were really yummy so comment down below what you think was my family's favorite all right so thanks everyone for watching i hope that y'all all got some great ideas for thanksgiving appetizers i will be posting a new thanksgiving video every week until thanksgiving so please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the recipes and tips and tricks and fun things that I have planned. So anyways, thank you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day.